What's up, dudes? This is Captain Gimping coming at you with another Cinehorde review uh, with uh, a ghetto headset. I actually had to re-record this review because my original review didn't work out because Windows, Windows, Windows loves to randomly switch recording devices when you go to record a video. So instead of fight with it, I figured why not just put the headset on and look silly for once. So today, I have a movie for you that is done by one of the great film directors of our time, someone Roger Ebert called the American Fellini, and to be honest with you, having been familiar with his body of work, I completely agree with that assessment. Um, the movie is Hugo. It's Martin Scorsese's first attempt at a family-friendly film. Uh, we all know the kind of movies that he makes. They're pretty gritty, they're pretty deep, and they're kind of dark, right? So he was talking about wanting to make a film that he could watch with his granddaughter without having to cover her ears or eyes or, like, fast-forward through certain scenes because he's been screening movies for her since she was really young, and he wanted to make something that they could just watch and enjoy together. And... This movie has the the wonderful talents of Ben Kingsley, Asa Butterfield, and Chloe Grace Moretz, which you guys know is one of my favorite actresses. You know, that's just what happens. Um, this movie is a special movie to me because it does something that not a lot of movies do. It pays huge respects to a man who is was one of film's forgotten pioneers, and usually you only learn about him if you are or were a film student. I mean, really a film student. Because you have to read textbooks and go look through all of this stuff in order to really learn anything about him. And this film puts you on an adventure with a boy named Hugo Cabret. He lives in the clock tower at the train station in Paris, and his father passes away, leaving him only an automaton, and he's trying to find the missing components to get it working because it's the only thing he has left of his dad. And it eventually leads him to make friends with Chloe's character, and she just so happens to be related to George Milliers. Um, this film was amazing uh, in, in that it recreated many of the famous moments from George Millier's short film projects and he was literally a pioneer he did hand tinting of his films he was a stage magician so he was really familiar with how to create optical illusions giving us some of the first practical visual effects ever done for the camera it was awesome he was an awesome dude unfortunately like you know, wars happen, and he was operating during peacetime when people tend to, like, escape his fantasies. And when people came back from the war, they didn't so much appreciate what he was doing. So in the movie, he's relegated to this toy repair dude. And, because he's a tinkerer, right? So he's like, what else am I going to do? I guess I have this kiosk, and I'm going to fix stuff. But when when little Hugo finds out who he is, he's mesmerized because Hugo loves film. And in many ways, I think Scorsese was drawn to the project because he as a boy was a very sick and frail boy. And he would watch people play and live their lives through the window. Because he, he I think he had asthma really really bad asthma and during the time he was a kid they didn't really have very many effective treatments for it so he was pretty much confined to his house for the most part and he would get away to the cinema and he'd spend any free time he had over there which makes sense right he got into this industry because it's such a part of who he is that it's like breathing it's like his blood um and for the longest time George Melies was forgotten, and I feel like Scorsese did something really profound with this film by restoring George Melies' status as one of the great pioneers of the medium. I mean, we wouldn't have half of what we have now if it wasn't for him, right? He was the first person that I'm aware of that did a true science fiction film in the broadest sense. A Trip to the Moon was this movie where people created this rocket, they shot it up, landed on the moon, and the moon was 
the Looney Tunes moon with the smiley face and the, you know, that kind of thing. We've actually seen many, many parodies of this through Max Flesher cartoons. And to, to see the care that Martin Scorsese put forth in order to recreate these scenes from Georges Méliès' movies, it was like I was watching them in class when we screen the actual films like it was almost indistinguishable and then they'd cut and then you'd see the actors break out of the characters they're playing for the George Melies film and become the characters that they're playing for the film Hugo and it was just astounding and I'd highly recommend this movie to anyone who loves cinema as much as we do <sighs> and I guess that's all I have to say about it I mean it, the film is gonna be uh, nine years old and if you haven't seen it yet it's available on blu-ray it's streaming on amazon check it out as always there's a link into in the description to our written reviews which are usually a little more elaborate and a little more detailed and there is the web address sitting right there um feel free to visit and until next time i'll see you at the movies And there is the web address sitting right there. Um, feel free to visit. And until next time, I'll see you at the movies.